to Chairs No Waiting, episode number 663, May Mary Day's Trivia Championship 2021, rounds two and the final. Two Chairs No Waiting is brought to you each week by the folks over at weaversdepartmentstore.com. You got to get things ordered real soon because to get it by Christmas, you got to get it ordered by the 15th of December. So head over there so you'll remember this next year. Get a 2022 Andy Griffith Show wall calendar. Yeah, and mark it on there when you got to order by Weavers. Check that out. And while you're there, pick up a Mayberry Man DVD if you have one. Give that out as a stocking stuffer. Head over to WeaversDepartmentStore.com. Two Chairs No Waiting is also brought to you by executive producer of episode number 662, Rani and jennifer vincent so randy and jennifer thank you uh it is great to be here in mayberry with all of you and i want to thank them for supporting us uh we just had a mayberry man showing in the huntsville madison alabama area this past weekend and i got to see randy and jennifer and and danny and uh, sharon i got to see all of the vincents randy and danny were there it's great to see them so many people from the chat room were there there were some people from the chat room there were people from my high school life what a great time uh to see people from work and just so many segments of my life kind of came together folks came out to support the movie and to be there and to be able to watch and see whether they could make a lot of fun of me in the movie or not <laughs> So I told him that was the worst thing that could happen. So if you come and you think it's terrible, you can pick out all the bad things I do and and uh, point them out. But everybody was very nice. So there's your stocking stuffer. You can get a Mayberry Man DVD, and I'll even sign it for you from Weaver's Department Store. Guys, thanks for being here. Last week, we did our round one trivia from the Mayberry Days 2021 Championship. Now, I hope you played that, but if you didn't, pause right now. And head back and listen to last week's episode. You might even want to go all the way back, if you hadn't, and do the qualifying round. Because, as I'll tell you at the end of this, I guess I could tell you now, the champion of the Mayberry Days trivia, he worked his way through every round. He went through the qualifying round, got all 15 questions right. Qualified to be in the finals, where he sat on stage with all the past champions of Mayberry Days trivia, who were in attendance at Mayberry Days. They all get a chance to be on the set stage. Uh, he, he, he was up there with them. He, so he won the qualifying round. He qualified to be in the final round uh, to, to sit there on the stage with them. And not only did he sit on the stage, he won. First-time winner. I'll tell you who he is at the end. So hold on to this. But I, I just, wow, that is a big accomplishment. It's hard to beat these folks that uh, are champions. But he came barreling through if i remember right jim sherrill did something similar to that or you know when the first time he ever won he just like vroom, went through and won everything so it was great so uh he can re he can correct me if i'm wrong he is in our chat room tonight and i'll try to watch and see if he tells me i'm wrong but uh he he is he is a multi-time champion jim and he was in there and uh, we got several others anyway we had several multi-time champions uh, on the stage and well, I'll go ahead and tell you his name. His name was Mike Jones. Mike Jones, he came out of there and won all of this. So that's who you're competing against, folks. Uh, so the difference is at Mayberry Days, to be able to answer these final two rounds questions last week's episode and this week's episode, you had to have a button. And so not only did you need to know the answer, you had to be able to push the button and be the first one to get to try to answer the question. Otherwise, whether you knew it or not, didn't make any difference, right? So, so definitely something you might want to think about uh, as you're playing and just realize how good these guys did considering they're competing against 10 people that are at that level. So, so let's have some fun now and go and play that trivia. And what we're going to do is play the trivia, and then we'll come back and play some regular trivia that's for more uh, – normal people <laughs> not that our trivia champions are not normal but they know things it's just like wow i have no idea i've been doing all this mayberry stuff for all these years and i have no idea how to answer these questions and they do so well so we'll do a few questions like that just to make us me especially me okay it's me i want to feel better about myself after this is over that i do know some answers and so we'll go to that but uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. Then we'll uh, hear from Randy Turner with This Week in Mayberry History. So let's get a little background uh, music going. And I think I picked this one. Yeah, this sounds trivia-like. little background music. 
And we're going to head over to the Mayberry Days 2021 Championship round number two. Okay? So round number one, you had a score total if you played. If you didn't play, you can pause now and go back and listen to last week's episode and get your score. Okay? All right, now that you're back, we're going to go ahead and get our score. So you take score from last week, and whatever that score is, whether it's a minus uh, or a positive, so you could be minus 1,000 points or plus 1,000 points or anywhere in between there, right? That's where you could be from last week. Now, this week, every question is worth 200 points each if you get it correct. Don't guess at questions if you don't know them because if you miss it, it's minus 200 points. And at the end of round two, we'll take our round two score and round one score, add them together, and that will be the amount of money or points that you can bet for the final round. So if you have a negative score, it was fun playing. If you have a positive score, you can continue on into the finals. So that's where we are. All right. So you got it? Got your pencils and paper? If you're driving, don't don't use a pencil and paper. Just try to keep it up in your head. All right, so let's go. Question number one of round number two for maybe today's trivia championship 2021. It's the very first question, 200 points each. Ready? Here we go. Question number one. Opie and his friend Howie decided to make their own newspaper, The Mayberry Sun. How much does Opie and Howie charge the adults for their paper? Opie and his friend Howie decide to make their own newspaper, The Mayberry Sun. How much do Opie and Howie charge the adults for their paper? Okay. I'll read it one more time and then give you the answer. Opie and his friend Howie decide to make their news their own newspaper, The Mayberry Sun. How much does Opie and Howie charge the adults? The answer is three cents. They charge them three cents. All right, three cents. And that's from episode number 153. How'd you do? Some of the folks in our chat room are getting it right. I see them. Congratulations, guys. Keep up with your points. So that was worth 200 points if you got it right. 200 points. Question number two of the Mayberry Days Trivia Championship. 200 points. For 200 points, here's the question. Where did Barney and Thelma Lou first meet? Oh, that one's a, I can see people pushing the button right now. Where did Barney and Thelma Lou first meet? This was probably the first question in this whole thing I knew. <laughs> Where did Barney and Thelma Lou first meet? The answer is Milton Blair's funeral. Milton Blair's funeral. That was from episode number 131. Did you get that? Milton Blair's funeral. So you had to be specific. You couldn't just say a funeral. It had to be exactly. It's Milton, Milton Blair's. I don't know if they would have given it to you if you said Wilton Blair or not, because I always thought it was Wilton. But it's evidently Milton Blair. At least that's what I got written on here. Let's see, Jim Sherrill. Jim Sherrill says it's Wilton. I think I may have written it wrong. <laughs> so it's Wilton Blair. We're going to go Wilton Blair, because that's what Jim Sherrill says. I'm going with Jim, which probably means uh, I get the answers and the stuff and everything from Kenneth Junkin. Uh, he's the one who puts these together, but it's very likely I typed this wrong. <laughs> I always thought it was Wilton. I just saw it right now. Oh, it's Milton. I always thought it was Wilton. So it's Wilton Blair. Congratulations. There we go. So Wilton Blair's funeral. If you said Milton, I'll give it to you as well. All right. Here's the answer or the question number three. So that was two, two questions so far. Should they be 400 points up or 400 points down or somewhere in between? All right, here we go. Question number three. How many years did Dud Wash spend in the Army? How many years did Dud Wash spend in the Army? Final read, and then I'll give you the answer. How many years did Dud Wash spend in the Army? The answer is three years. Three years. That's uh, episode number 88. 88. All right. 88 is the, is the, uh, episode 88 is the answer. Three years. All right. Question number four. Question number four. Jesse Pearson, owner of Pearson's Sweet Shop, is running a contest. 
What is the prize if you find a green center in one of Pearson's peppermints? Okay. Jesse Pearson, the owner of Pearson's Sweet Shop, is running a contest. What is the prize if you find a green center in one of Pearson's peppermints? All right. Last read, and then I'll give you the answer. This is question four. It's worth 200 points. Jesse Pearson, the owner of Pearson's Sweet Shop, is running a contest. What is the prize if you find a green center in one of Pearson's peppermints? The answer is a flashlight. You get a flashlight if you find a green center in a peppermint. And that's from episode number 110. 110. Folks in the chat room are saying flashlight. Folks in the chat room are copying Jim, Fer uh, Jim Sherrill's answer. No, I'm just, <laughs> that's what I'd be doing. If he said flashlight, that's what I'd say too, make myself look smart. <laughs> yeah. All right, next, next one. Number five, number five. Andy's girlfriend, Peggy, has an unexpected visitor, Don, which forces Peggy to call and cancel her and Andy's date. What was Don's profession? When you know his name is Don. Andy's girlfriend, Peggy, has an unexpected visitor, Don, which forces Peggy to cancel her date with Andy. What was Don's profession? Okay, final read, final read here. Andy's girlfriend, Peggy, has an unexpected visitor, Don, which forces Peggy to cancel her and Andy's date. What was Don's profession? The answer is, this is question five or 200 points. He's a pharmacist. He's a pharmacist. That's from episode number 68 of the Andy Griffith Show. All right, that's question five. We're halfway through. How are you doing? They're 200 points each, minus 200 if you get it wrong. Remember that, okay? All right, the answer is not actor, by the way. Gomer in the chat room says his profession was an actor. That's, that is not correct. But I understand the, all right, you get minus 200 for that one. All right, number six, number six. Floyd owns a shaggy dog. What is the dog's name? Floyd owns a shaggy dog. What is this dog's name? Let's see if you can get that one. Floyd owns a shaggy dog. What is this dog's name? That's question number six. We're 200 points. And the answer is Sam. His name is Sam. Oh, Sam. Yeah. 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 Old Sam. Yeah. He knows me. <laughs> That's from episode number 50. That's from episode number 50. Sam. Congratulations. Everybody got those right. All right. Number seven for 200 points or minus 200 if you get it wrong. What time does the daily train stop in Mayberry for water? What time does the daily train stop in Mayberry for water? Mm. Final read, and then I'll give you the answer. What time does the daily train stop in Mayberry for water? The answer is 3.45 p.m. The train stops in Mayberry for water. That's from episode number 40. Episode number 40. Number 40. All right. Everybody good. 345 is the answer. All right. Number eight for 200 points. For 200 points. Who was voted young lady most likely to become charming at Miss Wellington School for Girls in Raleigh? <laughs> I love that one. This is question eight. We're 200 points. Who was voted young lady most likely to become charming at Miss Wellington's School for Girls in Raleigh? <laughs> That's a good one. Last, last read, so you got a chance to try to know it. All right. Who was voted young lady most likely to become charming at Miss Wellington's School for Girls in Raleigh? The answer... As to who was voted to most become most charming was Darlene Swanson. 
Darlene Swanson. You had to have the whole name. And that was from episode number 20. Not just Darlene. You couldn't be just Darlene. All right. Here we go. Number eight. No, number nine. Woo, we're almost done. Number nine. Here's the question. 200 points. What may Berrien won't admit to having two sets of false teeth? <laughs> Uh, it wasn't George Washington. What may Barry and won't admit to having two sets of false teeth? Why would you? Why would having two sets be a problem? All right, last read. What may Barry and won't admit to having two sets of false teeth? The answer is Cecil Gurney. Cecil Gurney. That's from episode number ninety-nine of the Andy Griffith Show. All right, with our final question of round number two. Worth 200 points, we're at question number 10. Okay, remember, you're keeping up with your score. 200 points for the questions you get right, minus 200 for any you might get wrong. Here's our final question for round number two. Harry's Trout Pond has recently opened in Mayberry. It is located two miles east on what road? Okay, Harry's Trout Pond has recently opened in Mayberry. It is located two miles east on what road? Oh, this is tough, isn't it? All right, final read, and then I'll give you the answer. You can always pause if you don't want to hear it. But here we go. Harry's Trout Pond is, was, has recently opened in Mayberry. It's located two miles east on what road? The answer is on Miles Road. Miles Road. So it's two miles east on Miles Road. You take Miles Road and go two miles, okay? All right, so that's from episode number 130. 130, Miles Road, okay? All right, so there we are, folks. That is the end of round number two. So take your questions, take your uh, answers and numbers and add them all up. Get you a calculator if you need to. And figure out how many points you have to wager. You know, if you have zero or less, it was fun playing. You can play this part for fun. But if you have actual score and would like to wager some number, feel free to do that. And write that number down on the piece of paper so you know what it is so you can't cheat yourself. It's going to be like me when I used to play basketball by myself and if I was taking a shot when the clock ran out, I got fouled. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> if I missed. All right, so here we go. This is our final round question. You ready? So you can wager all the points that you earned, all the points that you've earned, right? You could, you could wager them all. That's how you're going to do it. All right, so here we come. Question, the final round question is this. What month was the runaway kid George Foley born? What in what month was the runaway kid George Foley born? Hmm. Would you recognize him on a porch? <laughs> what month was runaway kid George Foley born? Oh. Hmm. 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 I probably can't do that. That's probably copyright. I can't do that. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to read it one more time. And uh, Lydia, some folks in the chat room, I think they don't gamble, so they can't do this round. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Last chance, and then we're going to give you the answer. In what month was George Foley, the runaway kid, what month was he born? The answer, pause if you don't want to hear this, but the answer is August. He was born in August, and that's from episode number four. All right, so how did you do? How did you do, guys? That is the final. That's it. We're done with the Mayberry Days trivia. So as you're calculating your scores up, let me give you this little bit of information that I think I already told you kind of at the beginning. So Mike Jones was our very first trivia he was a first-time trivia champion in 2021 of the Mayberry Days Championship of Mayberry Trivia. And he won with a score of 1,600 points. And as I said, remember, 
that even if you knew the answers, you had to be able to buzz in fast enough to win it. So here was, here was his final score. His score, after having already, already won the qualifying round, to qualify to be in the finals, he ended up with a score of a total of 1,600 points to become the Mayberry Days Trivia Champion 2021. He was followed by past champions Pat Bullins, Jim Sherrill, and Dennis Bill, who came in with 1,400 points, 1,200 points, and 600 points, respectively. So, wow, guys. Hats off to all of these champions for the scores that they got. Because those scores were obviously after the final round where they evidently bet everything, every one of them, to be able to get to these levels. It's really amazing the scores that they were able to pull off and how close it was. This was probably the closest competition between first and second was 200 points. Uh, that's pretty amazing. And first and third, it was only 400 points. I mean, it was it was so tight. Uh, then it was, so it was 1,600, 1,400, 1,200, and then fourth place was 600 with Dennis Bill came in fourth. And, and it, again, no reflection on what they actually know it just had to reflect on how fast they could get buzzed in. So hats off to all these amazing champions that we've had over the years. Great job, gentlemen and lady, Pat Bullens. Great job. All right, so how did you do? How did you do? Did you score 1,600 points? That's pretty good, even doing it the way we're doing it <laughs> without buzzing in. If you got 1,600 points, you did pretty good. You did pretty good, didn't you? So congratulations. Yeah, the folks in the, folks in the chat room, I'm seeing uh, 400 points, uh, 800 points, some numbers like that. So when you see that they got these doing the buzzers to get in, you got 1,600 points total, very impressive. So congratulations. I hope you guys enjoyed that. And so now, you know, I want to, as I said before, we're going to clean our palate by playing some uh, <laughs> regular people. Wasn't that what I said? Regular people trivia. So let's do some regular people. There we go. We get some different music for the regular people trivia. Doesn't sound as official. All right, so let's play a few of these just to get whew, calm down from the scores that we just got. Okay, so here we go. This one's easy. You got a 50-50 chance of getting it. Alrighty. True or false? Andy threw a rock and broke a window. True or false? Andy threw a rock and broke a window. True or false? This could be a could be a trick question. I don't know. Let's see. Andy threw a rock and broke a window. The answer is true. That's true. He did do that. Wow. I don't. When was that? Somebody in the chat room tell me. That's a good one. I don't remember that. All right. Uh, number two, name the waitress that worked at the Junction Cafe and the Blueberry Diner. Okay. Name uh, the waitress who worked at the Junction Cafe and the Bluebird Diner. Hmm. Do you know that one? You got to get the name on this one. Name the waitress when who worked at the Junction Cafe and the Bluebird Diner. All right. Her name is Juanita. Juanita Barn. All right. So that's that. So Andy broke the the broke the window when he was mad at Warren. He was mad at Warren's when he broke the window, by the way. Thank you, Emmett Clark, for that answer. All right. Number three. Who said, <laughs> who said, quote, the sun's going to shine on your back door someday? <laughs> I like that. Who said the sun's going to shine on your back door someday? I don't remember that either. This is a good one. But who said it? That sounds like some wisdom there, doesn't it? Who said the sun's going to shine on your back door someday? Hmm. You guys, chat room will have to help me with that one too. I don't remember when that was. I got no memory this week. The answer to that is who said... The sun's going to shine on your back door someday. It was Andy. Yeah, it was Andy. Yeah, Andy said it. That's good. You guys, folks in the chat room got it. They're getting it. I, I'm not getting this. All right, so here's uh, question four. Helen worked on grading 
uh, worked on the grading manual with the handsome, and his name is one of these, right? So Helen worked on a grading manual with the handsome, was his name Bill, Don, Frank, or Greg? Multiple choice there, okay? Helen worked on a grading manual with the handsome, Bill, Don, Frank, or Greg, A, B, C, or D. So when Helen was working on the grading manual with the handsome fellow, what was his name? Was it Bill, Don, Frank, or Greg? The answer is Frank. It's Frank. Oh, that's right. Frank. No, it was Miss Peggy had Don, remember? Wouldn't you know his name is Don? All right. Let's go on to question five. Question five. Seems like the chat room is getting a lot more of these answers correct than they did on the Mayberry days. <laughs> I don't blame them. This is another true or false question. Ready? Mayor Pike was chased up a tree by a bear. True or false? This is a good question. Mayor Pike was chased up a tree by a bear. Okay. True or false? Mayor Pike was chased up a tree by a bear. Oh, this could have been a trick question if some of you answered too quickly. I'll say it a little different this time and put an emphasis on it. Mayor Pike was chased up a tree by a bear. The answer is false. Mayor Pike wasn't, but Mayor Stoner was. Oh, ooh, that was a good one. That was a false. Oh, that was a hard false. Oh, that was hard because you could really easy getting tricked on that one. Oh, that's tough. All right. Here we go. Number five. No, six. Number six. Who said, quote, gambling is gambling, whether it's blackjack, betting, or bingo? That's another good quote. I like that. Who said, gambling is gambling, whether it's blackjack, betting, or bingo? Oh. All right. Who said it? Who said that? Who said, gambling is gambling, whether it's blackjack, betting, or bingo? Huh. That's good. All right. Let's see. Who said it? Who said that? Who said gambling is gambling, whether it's blackjack, betting, or bingo? The answer is Andy said that. Andy said it. Yep. Andy said that. All right. Number seven. What did the female escaped convicts call Barney? Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> what did the female escaped convicts call Barney? What'd they call him? I'm not going to give you a lot of time on this. You get it. What did the female escape convicts call Barney? All right, last read. What did the female escapes convict? What did the female escaped convicts call Barney? He 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 better phone him Al. It was Al. <laughs> it was Al. Maud Al. If those hamburgers are ruined, I'm not responsible. <laughs> I shouldn't quote things. I just gave away the quote. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna make this one easy for you. Here we go. Question number eight. Who was the leader of the female convicts at large? It's supposed to be multiple choice, but I'm not giving you multiple choice. Who was the female or who was the leader of the female convicts at large? Hmm. Come on, you got to get this one right. Who was the leader of the female convicts at large? <laughs> the answer is Big Maud. I just gave you the answer. Maud, Hal, if those hamburgers are ruined, I'm not responsible. All right. See, I shouldn't quote things until I read the next question. All right. Let's see. What time is it? It's time to quit. That's eight questions. So that's eight questions. How did you do, guys? Did you do okay? Did you do bad? Did you, do you feel better about yourself a little bit after doing those questions than you did from the, uh, from the, Mayberry, uh, the Mayberry ones themselves? The Mayberry days, they, they were tough, weren't they? All right, so let's head over now and hear from Randy Turner with This Week in Mayberry History. <laughs>
Welcome to this week in Mayberry History, a report by special correspondent Randy Turner of the Gomer and Cooper Pyle Comic Book Literary Guild of the Mayberry Historical Society. This week, we continue our look at the varied career of actor Mark Miller, who played Bob Rogers in Barney's Replacement. Mark's starring role in Guest Word Ho was not the only time he was the star of a series. After the birth of his daughter Penelope Ann Miller and his brief stint in the soap opera General Hospital, in 1965, the second series in which Mark had a starring role debuted. In Please Don't Eat the Daisies, Mark played Jim Nash, a college professor, who along with his wife Joan and their four children, moved to an old home in constant need of repair in Ridgemont, New York. His performance in this series is the role for which he is best remembered. Please Don't Eat the Daisies, which ran for two seasons, is based on a 1957 book and a 1960 movie that followed, both with the same title. The movie version starred Doris Day and David Niven, with Flip Mark playing one of their children. Flip was the leader of the Wildcats in the Andy Griffith Show episode, Keeper of the Flame. Interestingly, in the TV version starring Mark, one of his children was also played by a child actor who appeared in the Andy Griffith Show. Kim Tyler played one of the Nash children in the TV series. Kim had played Billy Gray in One Punch Opie, a friend of Opie's who fell under the bad influence of Steve Quincy for a time. Kim is easy to spot since he sports a whoopee cap, the same type of homemade cap later worn by Goober Pyle. Please Don't Eat the Daisies also feature notable character actors in recurring roles, including Clint Howard, Ron Howard's brother who played Leon in The Andy Griffith Show. Another was Ellen Corby, better known to most as Grandma Walton, but better known to Mayberry fans as Hubcap Slush. Yet another was Dub Taylor, who played several Mayberry roles, such as the minister who performed a second marriage ceremony of Charlene and Dud to satisfy Ernest T. Bass. Please Don't Eat the Daisies also provided Mark with a new opportunity. He wrote the script for one of the series' 1966 episodes, thereby adding writer to his repertoire. After the series was canceled, Mark guest starred in other series, including I Dream of Jeannie and That Girl. In 1969, Mark first appeared in The Name of the Game, a wheel series, meaning it had three separate stars, all playing reporters in their own episodes. The independent episodes were tied together by the characters all working at the same publishing company and sharing an editorial assistant. After another guest appearance as a different character in The Name of the Game, Mark appeared a third time as yet another character, though this became a recurring role, with Mark playing that character a total four times in the series. In 1971, Mark starred in a TV movie and then continued to guest star in series, including Adam-12 and the FBI. In 1972, he also appeared in an episode of The Smith Family, starring Henry Fonda and co-starring Ron Howard. This was followed by more guest shots in series such as Cannon, Barnaby Jones, Kung Fu, The Waltons, Marcus Welby, and The Streets of San Francisco. Utilizing his experience as a writer, Mark Next not only co-starred in the 1974 comedy-drama film Ginger in the Morning, he wrote and produced the movie. The movie starred Sissy Spacek in only her third theatrical film, not long after her breakout performance in Badlands in 1973, and before her star-making performance in Stephen King's Carrie in 1975. She played an attractive young hitchhiker, picked up by a recently divorced advertising executive. The man's less than honorable intentions were foiled when his best friend showed up unexpectedly, the friend being played by Mark. 
and the estranged wife of Mark's character was played by Susan Oliver, the unnamed attractive female character in Prisoner of Love. We'll wrap up our look at Mark Miller's career the week after next, after taking a week off for the Christmas holiday. That's it for this week. As always, thanks for listening. And remember to take care of yourself, take care of others, and take Andy's advice and go out there and act like somebody. Wow, thank you as always, Randy. He always comes up with some amazing stuff. If you want to make sure you don't miss out on the amazing Mayberry stuff that he comes up with, send him an email at turnersgrade at gmail.com. Turnersgrade at gmail.com, and he'll make sure you don't miss out on anything. Wow, great job, Randy. Uh, so, folks, it has been a great week. We've had a lot of fun in Mayberry. I was uh, traveling last week, so it's good to be back in town. I uh, went to Phoenix, Arizona. I was out there, and then I came back. And this week, we had the uh, Mayberry Man premiere uh, here in the Huntsville, Alabama area. It was in Madison at the Center Planet 15, and uh, we had a, we had a great time over there at that. Uh, we had uh, several of the uh, tribute artists came to town with me. We had Ken Junkin was here as Otis and Bo Pierce as Briscoe. And Christy McClendon came in as Andalina. And uh, then just folks from all over the place were coming in and visiting with us and, uh, to be a part of the, the premiere of the Mayberry Man movie in the theater. It was actually sold out, but there was probably about 25 seats, 30 maybe, that were empty. And luckily that kind of the front row uh, kind of didn't have to be set out because it was really pretty close to the screen. But that theater was a very nice theater, huge screen. And we had a great time. Uh, the crowd really responded to everything. It was neat to see the the Mayberry Man name there on the, the ninth theater there in the Cineplanet 15. And just to see everybody and talk to everybody, we had a panel session after. And not only did we have the tribute artists that were here, we also had the co-producer, Greg Shell and the associate producer, Jeff Barry, uh, are both here in Huntsville with us, answering questions during the Q&A. And uh, people, the, these chairs in this uh, particular theater were recliners, and so folks were <laughs> relaxing, not in a huge hurry to leave after it was over. So we did about 20, 25 minutes of Q&A following that and had a great time. And Greg and Jeff have been at our house. And so they got to come here to the Two Chairs No Waiting headquarters. And Jeff sat down and did a little bit of a, a, little bit of a recording. So we'll, we'll be showing that in a coming episode of Two Chairs as well. So uh, we, we had a, we've had a good time. It's been a great Mayberry week here uh, in Huntsville. And I hope you've had a good one as well. So, folks, I would love to hear from you. Tell me about your week. Tell me about how Mayberry Days or Mayberry Weeks or whatever, Mayberry Man, whatever you've been doing, watching it on Amazon, getting the DVD, watching Andy Griffith Show on Pluto TV, whatever you're doing, I'd love to hear from you. Give me a call at 888-684-8415 or email me at floyd at imayberry.com. I'd love to hear from you. Go out there and spread the news about the podcast and about all this Mayberry stuff. You know, like the – if you watch this on YouTube – like it and subscribe to the podcast uh, share it with people share it on facebook share it on twitter wherever you're at it still amazes me that people don't know anything about all this mayberry stuff that we have going on and the fun we have so make sure they get to know it folks until next week have a great mayberry week and we'll be right back here on two chairs good night everybody <laughs>